Birkhoff's theorem and matching procedure in general from ad physics. Abstract, the subject of this presentation is to demonstrate how to find the Schwarzschild metric of a massive gravitational source by using Birkhoff's theorem. This theorem only considers the spherical symmetry of the system, Einstein's field equations and the physical restriction that a Newtonian observer should see the Newton potential. The latter will be used as a physical matching condition. Further it will be discussed that such a reasoning is more general and can be applied in many different fields of physics. The table of contents of this presentation is spherically symmetric solution of Einstein's field equation, physical matching, result and consequences, and matching in general. Spherically symmetric solution of Einstein's field equation, according to Birkhoff's theorem any compact gravitational source, without charge and spin, will result in the Schwarzschild geometry for an observer far away from the source. The main steps of the proof of this statement are sketched in the following. For such an observer at spatial infinity any compact gravitational source can be approximated by a spherically symmetric mass distribution. Therefore, the resulting metric will be spherically symmetric which determines the polar part omega of the metric without restricting the time and radial component, ds squared equals g mu nu dx mu dx nu equals g a a, ds squared plus 2 GR, DA DR, plus GRR, DR squared plus R squared D omega squared, where A is the temporal component. Note that the radial parameter is already set to the physical radius of the system and the polar part is D omega squared equals D theta squared plus sine squared theta, D phi squared. An observer at spatial infinity for which we want to find the Schwarzschild metric is interested in a metric which easily transforms into the Minkowski metric in spherical coordinates. Therefore a new time variable t is introduced such that the off-diagonal components of the metric GTR vanish. Note that this argument is also the motivation to write the polar part with the prefactor as the radius squared like in the Minkowski case. Furthermore, it suggests that the temporal component is negative to form a law or in space-time. Therefore the metric becomes, ds squared equals minus exponential of alpha, dt squared, plus exponential of beta, dr squared, plus r squared d omega squared, where alpha and beta are functions depending on the physical parameters of the system. To further determine the temporal and radial component one has to impose the Einstein's field equations for the vacuum case which implies that the energy momentum tensor vanishes t mu nu equals 0, r mu nu minus 1 over 2, g mu nu, r, equals kappa, t mu nu equals 0 where r is the Ricci scalar and r mu nu the Ricci tensor. The resulting components are gt. D equals minus 1, minus A over R, and GR, R equals 1 over 1 plus A over R. This solution satisfies spherical symmetry and the field equations in the vacuum. Physical matching In order to make contact to the actual physical system one has to impose Newton's gravitational law for an observer far away of the source phi equals, GM over R. Through experiments one knows that Newton's law is a good model to describe for example the potential of the Sun for the Earth. The orbit of the Earth does not include the whole space, but can be regarded as a limit for big radii r. This means Newton's law serves as a good matching condition for the attractive potential in the limit r goes to infinity. Notice that this kind of reasoning is an important technique to find theories beyond experimental proof and will be an subject of this presentation later on. 
The geodesic equation for a massive particle in a given space-time is x dot dot mu plus gamma mu alpha beta x dot alpha x dot beta equals zero where dots denote the derivative of the quantity after the affine parameter and gamma is the Christoffel symbol of the metric in which the particle is moving. Working in the Newtonian limit in which the gravitational field is weak, the observer is moving non-relativistically and the metric is time-independent, the geodesic equation reduces to second time derivative of spatial vector x equals minus the gradient of phi. With this restriction one finds the relation for the zero-zero component of the metric and therefore it also determines a g00 equals minus 1 minus 2 phi which implies a equals minus 2 gm. Result and consequences, with this physically motivated input the resulting metric is the Schwarzschild metric describing a compact source for an observer at spatial infinity ds squared equals minus open bracket 1 minus rg over r close bracket dt squared plus 1 over open bracket 1 minus rg over r close bracket dr squared plus r squared d omega squared where Rg equals 2 gm is the Schwarzschild radius. This description of a gravitational source is not only valid in the Newtonian limit but also for relativistic observers. Further the restriction for the observer to be at spatial infinity is not needed for spherical symmetric sources such as black holes. Note however that this metric is by design in Schwarzschild coordinates which is singular at r equals 2 gm this can be circumvented by transforming it into different coordinates such as Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. For finite radii one also has to keep in mind that for extended objects with structure the approximation of a point like mass source at the origin is no longer sufficient. With these remarks in mind one can now take the metric and for example calculate geodesics of particles moving in this system. Matching in general, building a theory of a complete system from first principles is in general a cumbersome task. Fortunately, for the case of a Schwarzschild source the result in a specific limit, namely in the Newtonian one, is already known and a matching can be established. A mathematical and sets respecting the symmetries of the system was taken and matched in a specific limit to Newton's law of gravity to find the Schwarzschild metric. Although the physical input has been made only in one special limit, the Schwarzschild metric is applicable in more cases and is therefore more universal. Take for example perihelion precession and bending of light which is both not describable with Newtonian theory of gravity. This demonstrates that taking an ansatz which is richer than the current model, for example being consistent with Einstein field equations in the case of Birkhoff's theorem, allows in principle to extend and improve the physics describing the problem at hand. This line of reasoning is not limited to this special case but is applicable more general. For example theories beyond the standard model usually use it as a reference point and predict the same outcome as the standard model in the experimental verified energy regime, but differ in the deep UV. Thank you for your attention. For questions please write a comment.